for the first time this season. Pro football in the city of Houston, Texas. The Colts have won the toss. They have elected to take the football first. That is Justin Forsett, deep to receive for Indianapolis. And kicking it away will be number three, Chris Brown. And NFL action in Houston is underway. This one comes down at about the seven-yard line to Forsett to the 20. And across the 25, out to about the 27 or 28-yard line. That'll bring the eight-time Pro Bowler Peyton Manning onto the field for the Colts at quarterback. Three TD passes, four interceptions. In the bright sunlight with the roof open here in Reliance Stadium. A dive, a lone back behind Manning. The play fake. Manning over the middle. Dallas Clark midfield. And Clark is down. First down. Colts brought down by Brandon Harrison. Well, no surprise here. The Texans uh, have two inexperienced safeties starting this game. Their two regulars are out. So who would ever imagine Peyton Manning going to the deep middle of the field to Dallas Clark on the first play of the game? Both Will Demps and C.C. Brown are out of this game. On first down, he will give to a die this time, and a die forward to about the 47. Gain of four on that play. It's second and six. Manning this time from the shotgun. Throws to the near side, and that is complete. Gian Robinson making the catch. As we mentioned, the roof is open. It will be that way for this entire NFL season here in Houston. Yeah, those fiberglass panels on the roof of the stadium, five of them were blown completely off when Hurricane Ike hit here 22 days ago. Luckily, the mechanism still worked that they're able to open it up, but it is going to get very warm for Tony Dungy's team and the Texans during the course of this game down on the floor. Air Third doesn't move well. Third and three, Manning running out of time, got rid of it, and he won't make the first down. Marvin Harrison with the catch, but he is short of the 40-yard line by about a yard. Well, Peyton stood in the pocket as long as he could, hoping somebody would come open. You know he wanted to go downfield with this instead of Marvin Harrison on a shallow crossing round, but in comes Mario Williams. And, and after giving up, Ryan. I'm sorry, Greg, after giving up a lot of yardage on the first play, some tightening up here and fourth and short. The Colts are going. Daryl Reed has come in as a blocking back in the backfield in front of a die on fourth and one. And Manning calls timeout. 12 19 to play. First quarter. Scoreless. We'll be right back. The Colts offense still on the field, and Gary Kubiak's defense has been porous to say the least. They have a big fourth and one now. A dive to the outside. First down to the 35. Now, Joseph Adai is not a breakaway threat. He's not the most elusive guy in the league. But look at this move here as he bounces it to the outside and gets away from D'Amico Ryans, the leading tackler of the Texans. He's not Eric Dickerson or some of the other great Colt running backs, but he is solid, he is steady, and a lot like Edger and James in the sense that he can make people miss at the line of scrimmage. That was well done. And the Colts trying to jumpstart a rushing offense that is dead last in the NFL. Over the middle, that's Robinson. Robinson to the 30. Well, Gian Robinson getting in on the action here early. He only had two catches in the first three games. He's got two here already. And Tony Dungy, uh, again, look at that record. 81 and 30 in the seventh year. And they have feasted upon the Houston Texans. 11 and 1. Peyton Manning, a perfect four for four. Throwing the ball here is a die. And a die pulls his way forward very close to the first down. As we mentioned earlier, Manning, three touchdown passes, four interceptions, and as you mentioned, Dan, coming off of the knee surgery in the offseason, it's been a slow start for Peyton. And any 
anybody who says modern NFL players don't need training camp. They don't know what they're talking about. Even Peyton Manning needed it. Third and inches. A dive out of the sunshine and just barely into the shadows, and he's nowhere near a first down. Zach Dials brought that play to a halt, along with Demarcus Fagan. Well, Zach Dials got upfield. Watch him on the right-hand side here as he gets upfield. You can see that Joseph Adai would have loved to have cut it back into that guard tackle gap, but an unblocked as Zach Dials came upfield and forced to bounce it outside right into contain. Adam Vinatieri's last field goal was a 47-yard game winner at Minnesota in week two. This one will be from 46 yards out. On its way. And very, very accurate. 9.42 to play in the first quarter. Colts jump to a 3-0 lead. Stadium in Houston. Peyton Manning got three points on the board. He always wants more than just a field goal, but the Colts are on top by a score of three nothing. And now the Houston Texans looking to get their hands on the football for the first time here at home. Andre Davis is deep. He returned three kicks for touchdowns a year ago. He takes this one at the goal line. Squeezes his way across the 15 to about the 17 or 18 yard line. And it'll be the Houston Texans under the command of Sage Rosenfeld when we get that. Texans are 0-3. Matt Schaub coming off a terrific game at Jacksonville. But Sage Rosenfeld gets the start here today in his eighth year out of Iowa State. You see his career numbers as he takes over on offense from his own 17-yard line. And the give is to Steve Slayton, and Slayton, slow start in the backfield. He'll lose yardage on the play. Slayton, the rookie, the third-round draft pick out of West Virginia, has been a pleasant surprise for the Houston Texans. And they'll go to Slayton again. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage and not much more than that. Third and nine. And Rosenfels needs the 27 for a first down. He'll throw for the first time today over the middle, and that is complete to Andre Johnson. He looks to be just a bit shy of first down yardage. Looks like he's going to be about a yard short. There's Matt Schaub, who last night had to go to the hospital with some sort of an intestinal infection and deemed by the coaching staff just not able to go today. He is going to be the second quarterback, so in case something happens to Rosenfels, I guess they turn to Schaub. They only have two quarterbacks on their active roster. Owen Daniels, their starting tight end, is their emergency quarterback, and uh, it would not be a good thing if they ever got to that point. Recruited to Wisconsin as a quarterback. He's in his third year as a tight end at 6'3, 246 pounds. And on fourth down, Matt Turk and the punting unit are onto the field for Houston. Only about a foot short. Andre Johnson needed to obviously extend that route just a little bit farther. Justin Forsett back in the sunlight at his own 30 yard line. So Turk kicking from shade into sunshine. For set at the 30. And across the 35 to about the 36 yard line. 7.38 to play. First quarter. Colts with the ball and a 3 0 lead. A look at the standings in the AFC South and Indianapolis looking up at a couple of teams, and you don't remember that happening very often in recent times. Mankind was drawing pictures of animals on the walls of caves the last time Indianapolis was not in the lead in this division. Peyton Manning on first down. They give this to a die, and a die, maybe a half a yard to a yard. D'Amico Ryans with the stop as Tony Dungy looks on. 
That's the furthest out of first place ever. Well, and you know they're watching uh, Tennessee. They're playing uh, Baltimore today at Baltimore. And uh, yes, they've got their own work to do, but you know he's looking forward to Tennessee maybe coming back to the pack a little bit. On second and nine, a die trying to turn the corner on the near side. And once again, that Houston Texans defense all fired up and stubborn on the run. Well, Anthony Weaver, the defensive end for Texas, got upfield. Brian Deem, the right tackle, is trying to get Weaver, but you see Weaver says, let's play this game on your side of the football, and that's exactly what happened, and Joseph Adai had nowhere to go. These Houston Texans have a very talented front four, three number one picks in that group. Third and ten. Marvin Harrison to the near side of the field. Manny over the middle to Harrison. Has enough for the first down. By about a half a football, I think, when they spot this. Let's, let's see exactly where they sit this down. Marvin Harrison breaking off his pattern at exactly the right spot. The coverage was pretty good by Ferguson, but Marvin was able to shield the football with his body. A frail body that is, but Marvin Harrison, he knows where the sticks are. Standing five for five, throwing the football. It's an Indy first down at their own 46. Short drop, flips it out. Dallas Clark off of one hand, and it'll be second and ten. You know, Greg, that last completion to Marvin Harrison, it just illustrates, you know, just a little bit about winning teams and teams that don't win. You know, on, on the previous Texans possession, Andre Johnson runs a route, tries to get a first down. What is he? He's a foot short. Marvin Harrison runs basically the same pattern, and what does he do? He runs the pattern where he's a foot long. That it does, Those two feet made a big difference. Second and ten. Throws. That's complete to Clark. Clark looking for running room. Pulled down from behind. Into Colt territory. Or into Houston territory. Excuse me. At the Texans 48. Boy, Peyton Manning squeezed every second out of the play clock there. When we were talking with Peyton yesterday, Danny, he admitted it's, it is different when you're playing a common opponent, when you see a team more than once every few seasons. Yeah, he, he says that the Texans aren't in any way confused or befuddled by my uh, antics at the line of scrimmage there they've seen it too many times he, he considers it a real advantage when he goes against say an NFC team third and four Manning throws and that one's complete to Anthony Gonzalez but he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down oh and he did not get the best of spots in terms of where he caught that ball <laughs> Again, it's the receiver's responsibility to run that pattern at a distance that would get you the first down. Now, sometimes the defender makes you break it off short. But here go the Colts again. It was a die last time. Fourth and one, a die behind Manning. Play fake. Manning going deep down the far sideline. It is caught. Reggie Wayne has the ball inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. And Jacques Reeves was actually right with Reggie Wayne. And Peyton Manning, they see that's where you let your playmakers make a play. Look at Reeves. He's really running stride for stride, but he doesn't see the football. He never pivots his head. He's never able to make a play on the ball because he does not know where it is. And Peyton Manning drops one right onto the shoulder of Reggie Wayne. Reeves, good coverage. He just didn't play the ball. Big time throw from Manning. And now first and goal for Indianapolis. How's that for fourth down play? A dive. Spin. To about the six. Again, there's a good look at the worth of Joseph Adai. 
He was hit in the backfield, just spun, had got hit again, kept grinding, and what's he do? He picks up some positive yardage on a play that could have been negative. Now you're talking about the red zone defense of the Houston Texans, and Gary Kubiak just bluntly told us, our red zone defense is the worst I've ever been around. Well, that's shockingly bad. 11 trips in, and they've given up 10 touchdowns and a field goal. Ninth play of this drive. Manning throws this side. It is complete to the goal line, and Tom Santi is knocked out of bounds about a yard shy of the goal line. Well, Peyton Manning, being an equal opportunity quarterback, is letting everybody in on the passing game so far the first quarter of this game. Again, that's a nice catch by Sandy right out there on the hands, but Peyton threw it where he could catch it in stride and try to get some of his body upfield. Peyton Manning is smoking. So number 95, Big Daryl Reed, is back into the game as a blocking back in front of a dive on third and goal. A dive to the end zone. Touchdown. Too easy. And the red zone woes of the Texans continue. 11 touchdowns given up on 12 trips inside their red zone. That is, that is just sad. Joseph Adai, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Gary Kubiak sees his red zone defense punctured again. Vinatieri on for the extra point. Kick is on its way, and it is good. Two minutes, 16 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter on Joseph Adai's one-yard run. The Colts extend their lead to 10-0. Texans told us when we visited with them, like everybody else in this league knows, there are two Colts teams. The way they play when they're behind and when they play when they have a lead, you don't want to play them when they have a lead. And wow, an early lead they have. Ten zips still in the first. Amon Green making his first appearance of the day for the Houston Texans in the backfield. Rosenfels throws this way, complete to Andre Johnson. Johnson to the 35 and across the 35, close to the 36-yard line. One thing Tony Dungy told us was he took his defense to task because he thought they've tackled very poorly in the first three games. And for the first time in a long time, he actually called them out on their performance against Jacksonville in their hustle. And you don't hear that very often from that kind of criticism from uh, Tony Dungy. He said they just didn't hustle the way I'm used to seeing them. We'll see how they respond today. Rosenfels to throw on second and three to the outside. That's complete to Owen Daniels, the tight end, and he has a first down out to the 45. Well, a well-designed play there. Kelvin Hayden got caught on the inside. And uh, Gary Kubiak drew up a pretty good one there, along with his offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan, in his first year. Son of Mike. That's the way they always used to introduce people back in the old days. You know, son of so and so. And really? Yeah. What old days were those? <laughs> Before either one of us, I'm glad to say. Rosenfeld throws near side. Andre Johnson, one on one, has a first down into Colt territory inside the 45 to the 43. That's, that's the way to go back to Andre Johnson. He is a big receiver at 6'3, 225 pounds. Good hands, and he's the go-to guy. Roosevelt starts with a nice fake to the right and then comes back. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one with Marlon Jackson out there, and he almost lost Jackson. That was a nice recovery by the Indy corner. He almost got faked out of it and came back in and got in on it. Andre Johnson now over 5,000 yards for his career. Play fake. Rosenfeld all by himself throws complete inside the 25 to Owen Daniels for another first down. And with that big play, we come to the end of the first quarter. The Colts lead at 10 0. Houston knocking on the door. We're back after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS. 
As we welcome you back to the start of the second quarter here at Reliance Stadium, we are pleased to welcome the commissioner of the National Football League, Roger Goodell, to the booth. Uh, I understand this is your very first look at the damage done here at Reliance Stadium. What was your impression when you first took a look? Well, you know, it's been a difficult period for the people down here in Houston, and uh, the people have had an incredible effort to get the stadium back, and it's uh, it's really remarkable to see it in the condition it's in, and playing with the roof open is really, um, it's really actually brought some uniqueness to this whole event. Roger, unfortunately, the National Football League is getting a lot of experience on having to deal with <laughs> hurricanes. It, it's unfortunate, but uh, it, the community and the Texans have responded really well, haven't they? They really have, and we've had some unfortunate experience with it, but it's nothing but what the people are going through. I mean, we, we know that we're there as part of the entertainment, and actually the Texans, in this case, have provided leadership and really brought this community together to help celebrate what's happened here. Down on the field, Amon Green taking the ball inside the 20-yard line. You know, we, we, we certainly would never say that football is a Band-Aid for, for the things that happen, but we did see what football can do for a com community as it did down in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. It's absolutely true, Greg. I, I think the team here plays such a role. New Orleans did and Katrina, and certainly the Texans are here with Hurricane Ike. And I think really what it's done is brought the community together. And now they're having a chance to come out, show that this community is even better and bigger than it was before. And it's, uh, it's a great thing. Well, the Texans are making something happen. Roger, I know one of the things that you've really talked about this season is player safety. And, and making some strides and cracking down on that. And it's, it, it, it seems, I hear the players talking about it, so I think it's working. <laughs> I think when you start suspending and you start fining, I think people really do start to take notice. We put a point of emphasis on it because it's a tough game, as you right. know better than anybody. But you have to play within the rules, and you, you shouldn't be out there to using techniques that are dangerous to other players. No, it's, I mean, you don't go into a players' meeting without them talking about it. Well, me. that's good news. Down on the field, the Houston Texans are at the 10-yard line. It's a first and goal. And Sage Rosenfeld going to keep it on the ground to the left side, and it's down to about the seven-yard line. Uh, Commissioner, I, I know that, that that there was a there was a campaign here. I believe Texans helping Texans, and the National Football League was a part of it. We did. Bob McNair was one of the first calls after the hurricane, saying we have to do something here for this community, and would we participate? So he's led an effort that's generated close to 2.5 million dollars, and we were glad to contribute to that in some small way and and help make a difference down here. Well, it's good to have you with us. Thank you for uh, coming by. We'll see you again soon. I hope. It's great to be with you, Greg and Dan. Roger, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roger Goodell, Commissioner of National Football League and the Houston Texans knocking on the door. <laughs> Penalty markers fly on the far side of the end zone. Interference call on Marvin Marlon Jackson, and it'll be first and goal for the Houston Texans. Our referee today is Tony Corinti. interference defense number 28 as this foul occurred in the end zone the ball will be placed at the one yard line first down boy this is some job by the texans of fighting their way back into it and that is a really easy call marlon jackson actually works his helmet and shoulder pads into the body of andre johnson when the ball was in the air that's pretty much of a no-brainer Again, it indicative of what a load Andre Johnson can be. So Steve Slayton is now in the backfield on first and goal for Houston. Rosenfeld. Short of the goal line. Again, let's see the surge. How close is that? Ooh, that ball almost looked like it broke the plane. Rosenfeld sticking it out. Yeah, he stuck it out. Is he out down yet? Boy, that was very, very close. Hard to see where his knee was, but he did extend with that ball, and it looked at first blush like it might have touched the line. Ninth play of this 70-yard drive for the Texans. Slayton, left side. Touchdown. Slayton, all five foot nine, 203 pounds of him with his second rushing touchdown of the season. And the Texans are on the board. And congratulations to Houston for clawing their way back into this game. 
after the Colts jump all over him. That was a big time drive by their offense and Sage Rosenfels. Chris Brown for the point after. And it's perfect. 6 to play in the first half. The rookie out of West Virginia, Steve Slayton. And it's 10-7, Colts. With starter Mac Schaub taking ill late last night, Sage Rosenfels, the emergency starter today, engineers a nine-play, 71-yard drive, culminating with Steve Slayton's touchdown run. There's Matt Schaub. He's the number two quarterback today. Justin Forsett. From his own two-yard line to the 20. And not much further. Out to the 22-yard line. 11.57 to play in the first half. And the Colts back on offense. Houston Texans pretty good here at home last season. 6-2 and two on their home turf. Dominic Rhodes in the backfield as the Colts. Get started on offense, and it's Rhodes to the left side and stacked up. Tony Hugo, the normal starter at left tackle, he's missed the last couple of weeks because of a knee and groin problem. He's active but not playing. Manning goes down under pressure, back at his own 17-yard line. Amobi Okoye and Mario Williams converge. Well, Peyton Manning with the ball fake, but Mario Williams just in there almost unblocked. It looked like they had Gian Robinson trying to block him. That is not going to work. Well, the Houston Texans defense trying to arise to the occasion. They've allowed scores on seven straight drives by their opponents, including two today. Pump fake. Manning steps up, throws down the sideline, in and out of the arms of Gonzalez. Well, for a minute there, I thought Peyton pulled it off. He escaped the four-man rush and put it on the back shoulder of Anthony Gonzalez. That was a really good job by Peyton Manning. Look at this fake stepping up, and then he's going to put it on the inside shoulder. And look at this. Gonzalez should have caught that for a first down. Look at that throw from Peyton Manning. Jacques Reeves was close, but not enough to stop it. That You cannot do that any better than number 18 pulled it off there. Hunter Smith kicking it away to Jacoby Jones. Jones lets it bounce. Decides against putting a hand on it and takes a cold bounce all the way down to the 31-yard line of the Houston Texans. Ten and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. 10-7, Indy. Peyton Manning with 178 career starts under his belt for Sage Rosenfels. This is the eighth in his career. He had two for Miami between the 02 and 05 seasons. He started five games for these Houston Texans last season. This is Steve Slayton. Well, you saw in that graphic that Rosenfels is five for five. A awfully good start for him. And uh, in the traffic, Andre Johnson has been there for him. Uh, there's no question whether it's Rosenfels or, or Schaub that, that, that Andre Johnson is the guy. He is the main cog in this passing game. Right behind him, though, is his tight end, Owen Daniels. But a great start for Rosenfels. Keep in mind, five starts last year. He won four of them. He throws again on the quick slant, and that's Andre Johnson up to the 40-yard line. Eh, about a yard or two short of a first down. There's Matt Schaub. And I can only imagine how ill he must be. We didn't find out until about an hour before the game that Rosenfels was going to replace Schaub. Again, for those of you that joined us late, a trip to the hospital unexpected, unexpectedly last night for Matt Schaub. He has an intestinal infection, and I think it's pretty obvious that he's not feeling all that well. Meanwhile, his fill-in... Sage Rosenfels, 6-for-6 six for, six for 64 yards, looking at a third and one, and he'll throw for it. Throwing. Oh, Andre Johnson lost his man and is on the loose. 30 inside the 25. It'll be first down for the Houston Texans. Antoine Buffet dragged him down and maybe saved the touchdown. Well, I said earlier that Peyton Manning is smoking. I think the same applies for Sage Rosenfels. 
But again, Marlon Jackson over there on that, Kelvin Hayden rather, the corner on that side, fell down. Now, what a, <laughs> that's just being physical by Andre Johnson. Look at the way he used his hands to get open. And Rosenfels is going, man, I wish my guys were as open as that all the time. Andre Johnson, five catches, 74 yards on the day. And here's Amon Green to the 20. And Eric Foster, the rookie defensive tackle, makes the stop. Here's Andre Johnson. As I said earlier, Dan, one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League looking for his first touchdown catch of this season. Well, another one of a long line of outstanding wide receivers to come out of Miami, Florida. Uh, the Hurricanes are doing a pretty good job of stocking NFL rosters with wide receivers, but what a big physical presence. And as you saw right there, great open field speed as well. Second and nine. Rosenfeld pulls it down and then throws, and it's incomplete. Kevin Walter, his intended receiver. Third and nine. You saw Sage tap himself on the chest and say, oh, I could have thrown that. A, I could have thrown that a little better. That's his first incomplete pass of the day. But a lot of grit being shown here by the Houston offense. After being down 10 to nothing, they have really taken hold of it, given their defense a break by putting together some first downs and driving into Indianapolis territory. Pretty good effort. And when you make a spectator out of Manning, that's half the battle. Third and nine. And the direct snap to Amon Green, who stumbled as he got underway and got just inside the 20-yard line. Now, there's a guy whose head and shoulders were just ahead of his feet. Amon Green was trying to be so explosive, he just, oh, Gary Kubiak's going, are you kidding me? We got this drawn up. Away he goes, and he just literally falls down. <laughs> there's untouched he just his legs just gave out and down he went so this will be a 37 yard field goal attempt by chris brown kick is on its way and is right down the middle 709 to play first half we are tied at 10. it's a happy houston crowd number one because there's football back in houston texas and they were also staring at a 10-0 deficit, thinking, uh-oh, is the route on? No, it is not. Justin Forsett deep. This kick will come down at the seven-yard line. Forsett, this side, 25, and run out of bounds short of the 30-yard line. Well, Peyton Manning, because of a lot of changes up on the offensive line, has been under stress and duress for the whole season. Jared Allen there, Erlacher in the beginning, Jacksonville. And then today he went down early. A couple of rookies starting today on the offensive line at both guard positions. And Charlie Johnson, the normal left guard, has had to slide out the left tackle to fill in for Tony Hugo. And Peyton has uh, had more than his fair share of people in his face. And Pete Peyton still acknowledging that he still feels the knees altered his pre-game routine in order to get it loosened up. Play fake to a dive. He has time. Dallas Clark across midfield with the catch to about the 48-yard line. All right, JB, thank you very much. On first down here, Joseph Adai to about the 46. Clock continues to move. 6.25 to play here in the first half of the tie game. Aaron Rodgers' shoulder did look okay, didn't it, Dan? Yes, it did look okay. What a great look at the uh, field here at Reliance Stadium. 30 yards in the shade, 70 yards in the sun. Manning out of the shotgun on second and eight. With time, quick pass over the middle is complete to Reggie Wayne, and Wayne to about the 41. Now that's one thing over the years. Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne are not afraid to catch footballs between the hash marks. And these guys will get in there where linebackers live, where maybe a defensive tackle drops back into cover. Big collisions can happen in there. And both of these guys over their years have exhibited a lot of toughness by going in there. So Texans fans would like to see their defense stand up here on third and three at the Houston 41. 
the middle linebacker for protection. Manning steps up, throws, throws into traffic and completed it inside the 30-yard line to Marvin Harrison for a first down. Houston has got to fix their two defensive tackles on pass rush going past Peyton Manning because he's stepping up between them and buying himself some extra time. A simple hook pattern for Marvin Harrison right in between. But look at this. The pass rush is going by Peyton, and they have got to keep somebody in there to get in his face. Again, look at Marvin Harrison. So frail, taking a big hit. First down, Colts now at the Houston 29. Oh, it looks like a false start. Charlie Johnson there, left tackle. He quivered. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Johnson, his usual Remains spot is left down. guard. He has moved over to left tackle to start for Tony Hugo today. And once you set in that two-man, you know, even though you're in a two-point, right there he's closest to it. Oop, that, oop, oop. He actually did a double clutcher. He actually threw his right arm back. That might have been enough, but then he... Actually did it a second time to make sure he got called. First and 15. I might be twitching if I was across from Mario Williams, too. Manning, pump fakes to the right side. Now going deep and overthrows Marvin Harrison. Peyton now 12 out of 15 on the day. He's completed balls to six different receivers. And he's looking now at a second and 15. That was a good job by Fred Bennett, the corner on that side. He forced that throw for Manning by good coverage. Everybody's in on the party today. Nothing new about that. Peyton spreads it around. A dive. Right side. Dodges outside. Can't shake loose. He doesn't get back to the 30-yard line. Fred Bennett that time coming up from his cornerback position. Well, back-to-back -back big time plays by Fred Bennett. The prior play, coverage on Marvin Harrison, and that time a nice open field tackle on Joseph Adai. Fred Bennett showing he can do a lot of different things. Downfield and coverage, upfield and run support. And now the crowd coming alive again on third and 12. It's nice that they make a lot of noise, but I'm not sure this affects Manning very much. Manning going deep for Wayne. Batted down. Jacques Reeves was there to break up the touchdown pass. And Reggie Wayne had a step and was wide open, and it looked like the football just got there a little late. And Reggie had to slow down for it, and just enough for Jock Reeves to get a hand on the ball. Reggie Wayne actually had a couple steps, and he has to slow down for the ball just a little bit, and that allows Reeves to make the play. I think a little more air under that ball, that would have been an Indy touchdown. Adam Vinatieri from 49 yards out. Kick is on its way, and it is no good. in quiet mode, but I'll tell you, these Houston Texans are all fired up on the near sideline. Well, and because of the miss, they're going to get outstanding field position all the way out at the 39. Benetieri just pulls this a little bit to the left. And you talk to anyone on the Colts roster, and they just tell you, we don't even bother watching, although Peyton's watching that one. They know that Benetieri is as close to automatic as you can get. Tony Dungy told us last night he's comfortable with Vinatieri out here from 51 or 52 yards out today, but he misses from 49, and Rosenfels and the offense take over at their own 39. Rosenfels to throw, and that one's incomplete. Andre Johnson covered by Kelvin Hayden on the play. Now going right back to, to Andre Johnson, but that was just a bad throw by Rosenfels. That you got to throw that ball to Johnson's inside and let him use that big body to block off the defender in that time Hayden but the ball was outside and behind well Gary Kubiak has been looking for his defense to step up and they've done that the offense has been doing okay they've scored in seven of their last nine possessions
Rosenfeld throws, and that's complete to the tight end, Joel Dreesen. First down at the midfield stripe for Houston, and this is Steve Slayton. Slayton, right side, tucks inside to about the 45-yard line. You know, every one of the Texans kind of pleased about what Steve Slayton has brought to the table because uh, I think Gary Kubiak said, we thought we were drafting a third down back. Well, and, and that's why he lasted until the third round because I think most NFL teams thought that what you were getting here was a third down back. Now, he's not a 35-time a game carry guy, but I think that uh, Kubiak's comfortable with him around 20 carries a game, and he's going to count them and make sure he doesn't go over that. Two minutes to play here at Reliance Stadium in the first half. We'll take a break. The Colts and the Texans tied at 10. From the 45-yard line, this is Amon Green running room left side. First down inside the 40 to about the 37 or 38-yard line. Raheem Rock making the stop. Well, Houston knew we, they had to run the football here. There's Dwight Freeney going upfield. Owen Daniels blocking him upfield, and that allows Dwayne Brown, number 76, there to get downfield. Chester Pitts, the left guard, really making a good block, but Dwight Freeney kind of in his rushing the passer mode way upfield. Play fake this time to Green. Rosenfels on the run, on the run, getting chased inside the 40, out of bounds, just short of the 30 yard line. Quint session, Freddie Kiaho running him out of bounds. And this is some good play calling going on right now by Gary Kubiak and Kyle Shanahan, who Gary told us they kind of work on it together. He goes from Shanahan over to Kubiak, and Kubiak is actually in the quarterback's ear, but the youngster there, a very bright future in this, in this league, and of course uh, it's in his DNA. <laughs> the nice run to the left side by Amon Green on the previous play set up Rosenfels to come out this way by himself. Second and three. And this is Green. And Green stacked up at the 30-yard line. Coming down the line was Dwight Freeney to make the stop. Minute 10 to play in the first half. Houston's got all three of their timeouts. If they convert this, I would get in there in a hurry and try to convert this third down. I know they're, they desperately don't want Peyton Manning to get the ball back with much time, but I think you got to think positively and think that you're going to score. 51 seconds on the clock. I'll think positively and say we'll be right back. Well, not that Peyton ever looks totally ecstatic during a football game, but uh, he'd like a better score than what's on the board now. Well, they're just in... Uh, Uncharted waters. Let's be realistic. This is a team that over the years has the most extraordinary September and October record. They're just not used to looking uphill at anybody. Third and two. Steve Slayton in the backfield. Rosenfeld is going to throw for it on the outside. What a grab by Andre Davis for a first down at the 25. 44 seconds to play and another timeout. It is good to see Reliant Stadium hosting a National Football League game. First one of the season in the aftermath of Hurricane Ike. And the fans are watching their Texans try to grab the lead before halftime here. Rosenfeld. Throwing. In down the middle. That's complete to Andre Johnson to the five. Continues to move. 35 seconds left to play in the half, and now Rosenfels calls a timeout. The last Texan timeout stops the clock with 33 seconds to play in the half. Matt Schaub relegated to second quarterback today, looking on. Indy with two timeouts remaining. The Texans are out of timeouts. His oh temporary replacement, or at least yeah. his replacement for today, Sage Rosenfels having a terrific day. First and goal at the five. Remember, Houston is out of timeouts. Steve Slayton, Vontae Leach in the backfield. Rosenfeld, rolling, near side, throwing for the end zone, touchdown! Andre Johnson with his first TD catch of the year. Enough 
bouquets to this Houston offense after being down 10 to nothing the way they have come storming back in and taken the lead in this game. Chris Brown. The Houston Texans with 17 unanswered points. And a penalty marker is down on the near side and the far side of the field. Uh, Indianapolis was offsides. It looked to me like they were they were across the line of scrimmage at the snap. Offside, defense number 41 had moved into the neutral zone and was there at the snap. This five-yard penalty will be carried over to the kickoff. 17 unanswered points. Andre Johnson, his first TD catch of the season. And with 27 seconds left on the clock in the first half, Houston with a one-touchdown lead. Rosenfels has had himself a first half. Houston leading it 17 to 10. Rosenfels 11 of 13 for 144 yards and a touchdown. This is Justin Forsett, and he will not run it out of the end zone. So Manning and company will start from their own 20-yard 20, 20 line with 27 seconds on the clock and two timeouts remaining. Colts have been outscored 17-0 here in this second quarter. You think some question marks still surround their defense? Manning from the shotgun fakes the handoff, throws Dallas Clark across the 35, close to the 40-yard line, and a first down. And a timeout stops the clock with 19 seconds to play. Well, Houston sitting back, playing a real safety deep defense here. Little nifty play fake, but that creates such a soft belly in the middle. By the time the safeties are able to come up and make a play, Dallas Clark beyond the linebackers. And, you know, normally that zone in there is about four or five yards wide. And the defense that Houston was deploying right there, it was about 15 yards from front to back. A lot of room. Dallas Clark telling us yesterday he still wears a brace on his knee and he will do it until they can do an MCL test with no ill effects. First down. Manning throwing over the middle. That is intercepted. Intercepted by Zach Dial. They're going to rule him down back at the 36-yard line. Well, that time Houston changed up their coverage. They went man coverage on the four receivers with two safeties sitting back deep. So Diles is locked up one on one. And uh, as a smallish linebacker, he was able to run with Dallas Clark and make the play. You can see Diles right there locked up one on one with Dallas Clark. And yes, he's got his right arm in there, but that is absolutely a 10 out of a 10 in terms of a linebacker in coverage on Dallas Clark. It has been a while since Peyton Manning has been picked by the Houston Texans. Three seasons and 197 attempts. Well, Peyton will never stop being aggressive. And I think that's a situation you got to give credit where credit is due. And Zach Dials, that was superlative. Rosenfeld not going to take a knee here. Throws over the middle, and that's incomplete. Coming up short of Andre Davis. 11 seconds on the clock. And you know what? We've got a rookie at left tackle for the Houston Texans and Dwayne Brown. And he has been doing a job on Dwight Freeney. Greeny got in at the very beginning of this game and, and got in on a play, but this kid here is uh, acquitting himself pretty darn well. 
Houston with zero sacks and zero turnovers the last two games. This is Slayton and Slayton to across the 40 still on his feet close to the 45 and that will run the time down here in the first half which is terrific for the home standing Houston Texans. Peyton Manning intercepted the Colts trail 17-10. We're back with a sprint halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. And so this home opener is much anticipated and long awaited. Manning goes down under pressure. Well, the Houston Texans defense trying to rise to the occasion. At halftime here at Reliance Stadium in Houston, the Texans leading Indianapolis by a score of 17-10. The roof open as it will be the entire season here in Houston. Welcome back, everyone, along with Dan Deerdorf. I'm Greg Gumbel. Uh, it has been a surprising game, although Tony Dungy would probably say not because they always play us tough. Well, and I just a lot of credit goes to Houston, the way they fought their way back into it. Let's take a look at some of the action that happened in the first half. Both of these teams really wanted to play well against the, the run. Uh, the Colts haven't run the ball this year. Houston is stuffing them. Slayton has been, you know, he's been moderately effective, but it's really been Sage Rosenfeld through the air. That touchdown to Andre Johnson. And this a rare occurrence. Peyton Manning, who hasn't thrown an interception against his team since 05. And as we get set to bring you the second half, in high definition. This Colts defense arrived here today, the second best pass defense in the NFL, allowing just 141 yards a game. Sage Rosenfeld threw for 144 in the first half. Well, some of those stats are a little skewed because everybody's running the ball on them. They've run the ball for almost 200 yards a game against the Colts. This is Andre Davis at the goal line. To the 20, to the 30, and out close to the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at some numbers, Dan, from the first half of play. Well, you see right there that, it, again, uh, that score for Indianapolis, the 10 points on the left, that happened right away, 10-0. But again, this this 21 yards rushing right there. This is a team that's only averaging, uh, you know, at 64 yards a game running the football. So much of their offense is based on play action. And if the Colts aren't effectively running the football, Peyton Manning is really playing handicapped because he cannot have an effective play action fake. Sage Rosenfels at the controls as he was the entire first half. And he's going to throw right here. He gets time far side of the field. And that is complete. Devontae Leach out of the background. <laughs> I think that's how you finish as he goes right through and over the top of Melvin Bullet. Devontae Leach, <laughs> just watch him finish this. You're coming up to make the tackle, square up, and get, <laughs> I don't know, I guess destroyed might be one word, but trampled or whatever. Wow, what a hit by Devontae Leach. Houston with a big time of possession edge in the first quarter after not a uh, second quarter after not having it in the first on second and two. It gives us to Slayton. Slayton first down and then some across midfield and into Polk territory to about the 48. And if confidence was visible, if it was if it was something you could see, you would just see it being radiated by the Texans right now, and that's Gary Brackett. The middle linebacker and the inspirational leader of this defense, along with Bob Sanders. And of course, Sanders not playing, but Gary Brackett not moving at all. We'll be back. Well, Gary Brackett is up and over on the sideline. He looks uh, like he's okay. Boy, did he take a heck of a shot from Vontae Leach, the fullback. Leach ahead of Steve Slayton in the backfield now on first down from the Colt 49. This is Slayton following Leach around the left side inside the 45 to about the 43. Let's go back to that play. Vontae Leach is having some half. Here's Leach right here. Here comes Brackett. Watch the collision between these two. Leach just right over the top of Gary Brackett, and they had a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Remember, on the prior play, Vontae Leach caught a pass and trampled Melvin Bullitt. And then on that last run by Slayton, Vontae Leach is the lead blocker again. He's I'm not sure what he had at halftime, but it's uh, taken effect. He's he's come out here on fire. While Brackett is on the sideline, 
Freddie Kiaho, number 54, has moved to the middle. Rosenfeld throws far side, in and out of the hands of the tight end, Owen Daniels. That should have been a completion. Uh, that's the old classic case. He turns upfield before the ball gets there. You want to look it in? You can see a classic case. His eyes and head had already turned upfield. He knew the hit was coming. And on third and four, <laughs> Gary Brackett comes back onto the field for Indy. If you're a sixth grader or a high school kid at home, that's a valuable lesson. No matter at what level, you have to look the ball in all the way to your hands. On third and four, Rosenfeld throwing over the middle. Inside the 30, it's ruled. Is that a catch or no? Incomplete. Incomplete and hit the turf. Well, Dwight Freeney that time got inside Dwayne Brown, but Rosenfels was able to buy some time. Watch, watch this move. Classic upfield and then the spin back to the inside, and he leaps at Rosenfels, but there was no rush from the other side, and Rosenfels was able to get it away. Now, downfield, right through the arms of Owen Daniels and right onto the ground. So the punting unit, Matt Turk is in, set to kick it away to Justin Forsett. Puts it up, drops it down inside the 10, and it bounces into the end zone for the touchback. 12.47 to play, third quarter, Peyton Manning onto the field when we come back. Manning and the Colts from their own 20-yard line, trailing 17-10. Peyton 13 out of 18 on the day for 153 yards and an interception. The flip to Dallas Clark. Clark running room 25. And out close to a first down at the 30 yard line, maybe just short of the 30 yard line. Brandon Harrison, Zach Dials making the stop. So much talent for Peyton Manning to throw the football to between Gonzalez and Wayne and Marvin Harrison, and then a little tight end screen like that. So hard to defend. A little difference after their first two. Here's a guy looking for the first down. He has it and more across the 35 to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. And we have a Houston Texan down in the Colt backfield, and that is Travis Johnson. Well, and he looks like he's grabbing a lower leg there, grabbing at his right knee. Travis walked through our meeting area yesterday and was as happy as can be. Not so much now. Travis Johnson coming off the field under his own power. First down for Peyton and the Colts at their own 37. Two fakes, and then flips incomplete to Dominique Rhodes out of the backfield. Let's go back to that play involving Joseph Adai. Well, that's why Dominique Rhodes was in there. Joseph Adai had to change his shoes. Take a look at the left shoe right there. His, his sole is completely off and flapping in the breeze. You can see it right there. A little hard to gain traction when you're uh, when the sole of your shoe has come clean off. Nothing sadder than a man who has lost his soul. Second and ten. A die back on the field with a new shoe and on the draw to the 40, 45, and close to midfield. That'll be a first down. Well, Joseph Adai glad to be back here in his hometown, but even more glad to get blocking like this. Take a look at this hole off a of left guard. Great job there, Charlie Johnson, turning up field. But Joseph Adai, 12 yards or so downfield before he is contacted by D'Amico Ryan. That's quite a little convoy he had in front of him. That 12-yard gain on the ground, the best of the day for the Colts. First down now, half a foot short of midfield. Manning going to go deep. Incomplete. Intended for Marvin Harrison, broken up by Fred Bennett, who's playing a pretty good game out on the corner for the Houston Texans. And once again, Marvin Harrison gets behind a defender. Take a look at the right there. Marvin Harrison has a step, and it looks like he is gone, and yet the throw is back to the inside. And Peyton knows, man, I needed to throw that outside or else 
I don't know. Maybe that was he was expecting Marvin to break more into the middle of the field. Either or, the timing still not there. Reggie Wayne in the slot on second down. Outside, and this is Wayne, and Wayne is brought down after just a gain of a couple of yards by guess who? Number 32. Fred Bennett there again. Back to back, he's right in the middle of it, and if he doesn't make this tackle, Reggie Wayne's going to pick up a first down. You can see what he did. He's got initially the inside receiver, but he's got that area of the field when he saw the ball going to Reggie Wayne, broke off his first guy, and makes a heck of a tackle. Fred Bennett, a second-year cornerback out of South Carolina. Third and eight now for Manning. Play clock down to two, down to one. He didn't get it. They're going to call the Colts for delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Normally, you get an extra second by the time field judge looks up. And I am surprised that that drew the flag. Normally, normally it takes an extra second or second and a half. Third and 13. Manning needs the Houston 40 for a first down. Quick pop over the middle, and it is grabbed by Joseph Adai, but he's not going to get much out of it. Gets back to midfield. Well, Peyton under pressure had to dump it to Adai, and Adai looked like he was surprised by the throw. Joseph Adai is the safety valve here, but he, 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 that was a defensive move. That, that, that ball hit him right on the face mask. Hunter Smith kicking it away for Jacoby Jones. Fair catch called for and made just inside the 10 yard line. 9.08 to play, third quarter. Houston leading by a touchdown. 9.08 to play, third quarter. Houston, 17 passing attempts, 17 rushing attempts as they take over at their own nine. Rosenfeld throwing, and it is incomplete. Under the gun. Let's go back to Manning to Harrison. Yeah, remember on the last series uh, how Marvin uh, and Peyton misconnected right, right here? You know, I said Peyton Manning, boy, Marvin had a step, but if the ball's a little to the inside. Well, watch this exchange. I think it's pretty clear Peyton Manning expected Marvin Harrison to be on the inside. Marvin's going to the outside, and they've been having an animated conversation about it. Keep in mind, that's the most prolific quarterback wide receiver duo in the history of the National Football League. Not on the same page all the time. On second and 10, Rosenfels to throw again. And that one is complete across the 15 to about the 18-yard line to Owen Daniels. Just take a look at <laughs> that. That is just a little hard to believe, those two, how prolific they have been. And But again, this, you know, we, we talked at the top of this show about the Colts needing to get back in sync. They are not entirely there yet. Marvin Harrison, number four all-time in receptions, number four in receiving yards, number five with those 124 touchdowns. Third and one. Here comes Slayton right behind Leach. And Leach, or Slayton across the 20 to the 22 in a first down. And once again, Vontae Leach clearing the way right through the right side. Vontae Leach really giving us a good look at what a lead blocker is supposed to do. That time he did a good job of rooting Freddie Keao out of the hole. And this guy here is a road grader at 6 feet, 253 pounds. Slayton takes a break. Amon Green sets up in the backfield with Leach now on first down. Here's Green. And Houston running the football out across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. A pickup of about nine. It looks like it'll be second and one. 
And all of a sudden you're starting to see the Colts giving up more and more yards on the ground. Keep in mind that they lost two key cogs on the inside. Quinn Pitcock, uh, one of their better defensive tackles, retired at the beginning of training camp. They released Ed Johnson because of off-the-field problems. Those might have been their two best interior defensive linemen last year. On second and one, here's Amon Green. First down, out to the 40-yard line, and another Texans first down. Well, this Colts defense has been getting gashed all year long. Started in the opener when Matt Forte got him for 123. Then Adrian Peterson followed with a buck 60. And then the last time around, two weeks ago, both Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones drew. Both got over the century mark. And Ron Meeks and his group, they needed to tighten things up. That is a staggering number there, 199 yards a game. 31st in the National Football League. On first down now from the 40-yard line. Play fake, look out. Hit from behind and covered by the Houston Texans. Dwight Freeney. Hit the quarterback, Dwayne Brown, the rookie, covered the ball. Well, you can block him some of the time, but you can't block him all of the time. And right there, you could see the step up field by Dwayne Brown. I don't know what he was doing trying to sell the play action. You cannot take a step forward while Dwight Freeney is taking a step up field. You will never recover. The only thing he recovered there was the fumble. So now second and 20, and the speedy Slayton is in the backfield. Rosenfels throws, and here is Slayton, and he can't get away from the tackler. All right, JB, as we said at the very top of the day, Indianapolis and Houston not going to want to lose ground at all to either of the teams ahead of them, Tennessee or Jacksonville. And right now, Houston with the advantage, although they're looking at a third and 17. Slayton dodging tacklers penalty marker flies as Slayton is pulled down at the 42. Tony Corrente will give us the read on the flag holding penalty it looks like on the defense. Well according to Rosenfels it's on the defense. Holding in the defensive line number 79. Five yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Oh what a crippling penalty that was instead of a punt. And Marlon Jackson is down on the field for the Colts. He's being tended to. 4.45 to play in the third. We'll take a timeout. Number 28, Marlon Jackson was able to walk off the field under his own power. But he's on the sideline now to watch this ninth play of the drive. He's replaced by Tim Jennings. Houston has run the ball for 45 yards here in the second half. They ran it for 48 in the first. And whistles before the play begins. Looks like Eric Foster, the nose guard, just jumped onto the center. Tony Corinti. Encroachment, defense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. You know, let's go back to that down. big play that gave... Houston a first down. Here's Raheem Brock right over here. You say, how does a defensive lineman get called for holding? Well, one of his jobs to keep that guard off the linebacker, and you can see that's just a tackle, and it happened right in front of the umpire. Yeah, it freed up your middle linebacker, but man, so apparent to the official, and that was an automatic first down on a punting situation. Houston hasn't had a flag thrown on them yet today. First and five. Here's Slayton. And Dwight Freeney was right there. Sometimes Dwight Freeney reminds me of the Tasmanian Devil. You know, they're just that whirling cloud because he spins. This time he spins right into the play. And the one thing I know for sure, Dwayne Brown, the rookie from Virginia Tech, didn't see anybody doing that kind of stuff in college. Matt Schaub relegated to... Job actually oh, spent, status. Yeah, he actually spent the night in the hospital last night after falling ill with some type of a virus that's been going around the team. Second and six now, two tight ends, Rosenfels to throw. Popped up into the air and falls incomplete. Like Eric Foster got a hand on that. 
Well, let's take a look at him from right behind Gary Brackett. There's Foster, number 68. Gets right in the throwing lane, tips it with his left hand. Two just can't find the ball. He's looking for it up in the air. He's, he, he, he knows it's there, and he spins, and by the time he's able to track it, it's back behind him. Oh, he knew he had a hand on it. So now third and six, and Rosenfels would dearly love to move the sticks and keep possession of the football. With time, throwing over the middle, got his man, Andre Johnson, to the 31 and a first down. What a play by Andre Johnson. Ends up losing his helmet, and he's still down on the ground. Watch this hands catch, knowing he's going into traffic. Takes a big hit from Antoine Bethea, and then two other Colts come in to finish him up. But when you know you're headed towards that safety, and you've got to open yourself up, expose those ribs, what a piece of work by Andre Johnson. Oh, you, Andre. oh, you know there's a safety in there, and you know he is coming in to drop the hammer. Eight catches, 117 yards. He has recorded the 19th career 100-yard game of his Wonderful short career, too, and second this year. And he took a big shot from Bethea, and that is, uh, folks, that is some demonstration of mental and physical toughness at the same time. A lot of receivers would have short-armed that thing. All of a sudden, alligator arms kind of sprout out. Meanwhile, Rosenfels does keep possession. First down at the 31, clock moving up on two and a half minutes to play in the third. Amon Green, not very much there. And that's right where you want that group. If you want to win a game against the Colts, make them pay to watch. Second and nine, Rosenfels under the gun, throws this side. That's complete to Owen Daniels, and Daniels just across the 30 to about the 28. James with a little cartoon thing going the last couple of weeks. I like it. Yeah, I did too. 37. Rosenfels throwing, and that's complete to the 35. That's not enough for the first down, and that will bring the field goal unit on to the field. David Anderson with the catch. Now that was just a nice, safe throw. You want to come out of this with points. And Chris Brown has uh, not had a busy regular season, only one for one. So Chris Brown this time from 43 yards out. Low snap, Turk puts it up, and Brown puts it through. And two for two today, that makes him seven for seven for the season. He's perfect. All you have to do is land at the airport and drive around this community for five minutes to see the effects the blown out windows, billboards lying all over, vegetation. And really the hard part, so many parts of Houston went without power for two weeks. Ago. 20 unanswered points by the Texans. They're on top, 20 to 10. This is for set a couple yards deep in the end zone to the 20. Big hole up the middle, and then he's hit hard at the 20-yard five yard line by Kevin Bentley. Well, you think that the Texans are showing a little passion, a little enthusiasm. I think the confidence is starting to show on both sides of the ball. And the body language for the Colts on the other side is not great. Now, that doesn't mean that Peyton Manning's not as confident as always, but you can still see that this is a team that has not hit its stride, not even close to hitting their stride. 14 seconds to play in the third quarter. Manning and the Colts from the 26. A dive. Maybe two. And that will take us down to the end of the third quarter. It's 20 to 10 Colts. We're coming back to Reliance Stadium and talk with the owner of the Houston Texans, Bob McNair, after this message and a word from your local station. 
Welcome back to Reliance Stadium, everyone, to the start of the fourth quarter, 20 to 10, Houston. Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorf, and we are pleased to be joined by the founder, chairman, and CEO of the Houston Texans, Bob McNair. You know, we're happy to see football back here in Houston. You must be ecstatic. Oh, I am. I am. The whole community is excited, and we're delighted to have you here with us today. Yeah, one of the things is as we uh, as we look at your Texans now, they're they're putting on a pretty good show today. Yeah, we've started playing better. Last week we played well. The first two games we really just didn't play well, and uh, we've just got to step it up. Uh, hey, Manny, I think we read you Wayne there. I think your team is a wonderful illustration of how when something really bad happens to a community, uh, they can really rally behind a sports. It gives people something to talk about. Thing to look forward to and I know today much anticipated it is it is and it would be very positive for our community uh, to be able to come out with a victory today because it would really lift their spirits no doubt about it the commissioner Roger Goodell joined us here in the booth in the first half and he talked about how one of the first conversations he had right after the storm was with you tell us about it. yes well I called him and uh, told him that uh, that I would give 500,000 for the uh, hurricane victims if, if uh, we could match it at the league level, and he said that uh, they would certainly do that. And so that sort of kicked it off, and then Reliant came through, and Price Waterhouse came through, and Chevron came through, and uh, the whole community has stepped up. And, uh, you know, they support us, and it's time for us to support them. You know, the whole country looks in and, and watch what happened down here, but then let's face it, as time moves on, they're distracted by other things. What, how much is left to do here in Houston? Well, there's, there's still a lot to be done, but uh, most of the damage was down at Galveston and down on the beaches, and uh, it's going to take a long, long time to repair all that damage. The Houston Texans stepping up on defense here and pulling down the runner shy of the 50-yard line. You know, we, we had conversations with several of your players talking about any damage that they might have sustained, but you and your staff also had some damage done to your property. Well, everybody did. It was just throughout the whole city because the winds were very sustained, you know, like 10 hours or so. It wasn't an hour or two. And it just created a tremendous amount of damage all over the whole area. Now, once again, what was the amount of money raised? Well, we've raised $2.45 million, and uh, we're going to keep going with it. Congratulations. Well, thank, thank you. you. It's good to see you. Thanks thank for you. having us here. Thank you. Nice to have you. Good luck the rest of the game. Thank huh? you. <laughs> Peyton Manning to throw, and he gets wrapped up, and he goes down. Mario Williams doing the damage. Oh, can we ever wipe the smile off your face? Well, <laughs> well that's what we pay him to do. <laughs> He's doing great. He's a good, good young man. And uh, here's a replay for you. That's just power football right there. And that's asking an awful lot, asking a back to try to separate Mario Williams from the quarterback. He's, he's a man among boys, I'll tell you. He's some specimen. Bob, and he's, he, Bob, he is that. We wish you and, uh, and the folks here in Houston all the best for the rest Thank of this you. season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hunter Smith ready to kick it away. And this will go into the end zone for the touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. 20 to 10. Houston Texans in charge. Houston Texans and Mario Williams fired up, you bet. Four sacks on the season, two of them here today, and uh, they're doing a pretty good job of frustrating Peyton Manning. And he's, uh, it's a little early here, just the first week of October, but uh, might be a little trip to Honolulu in Mr. Williams' future. So Rosenfels from his own 20. This side, incomplete, Andre Davis. On second and ten, the pitch for Slayton, trying to turn the corner. He does, and here he comes, 35, 40, down the sideline, pulled down at about the 40-yard line of the Indianapolis Colts. Concession saved the touchdown. Well, if you saw West Virginia play any time in the last three years or so, you saw a whole bunch of that. Of Steve Slayton getting to the edge and making something happen. And what better way to get him on the edge than with the pitch and again behind Vontae Leach. And the Colts have no answer for it. They even half contained 10 yards downfield or so, and he gets around that. Right there. 
Freddie Kiaho told us oh. last night that his fellow linebacker, Clint Session, who played against Slayton in college, said Slayton is another level of fast. That pass to wide open Kevin Walter. And Walter inside the 15. It's another first down for the Texans. And this is a Colts defense right now totally on its heels. The roles have been reversed from this series history past. By the way, before we get too far removed from uh, Mr. McNair, we thank him for stopping up here. We talked about his contributions to the relief effort here. It's also worthy to note Jim Ursay, the owner and chief executive officer of the Indianapolis Colts, contributed $50,000 to the cause. Well, congratulations to, to Jim and the Colts. Uh, it's not very surprising. First and ten, and timeout is called. 10.32 on the clock. The Texans with the lead and knocking at the door again. Ten minutes, 32 seconds remaining to be played here in the fourth quarter. Tony Dungy's club, 23rd ranked defense in the NFL, and they are right at that 340-yard marker today with ten and a half minutes still to play. Here is Steve Slayton. Slayton slicing his way to the five. Well, until the Indianapolis Colts can demonstrate that they can stop the run, they better get ready for this on a weekly basis. We showed you a little while ago how they've been run on by everybody, starting with the Bears at the, in the opener, then Adrian Peterson, then Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew, and now the Texans are doing it to them as well. And it's uh, it's got to be very frustrating. And it's costing them football games. Houston, meanwhile, up to 140 yards rushing today. Here is Slayton. Slayton to the two. Running the football is imposing your will on the other team. And right now, that's what the Texans are doing to the Colts. Andre Johnson, incidentally, shaken up a short while ago, is back on the field. And we get a measurement. And it's going to be at probably a couple more weeks until they get Bob Sanders back. Inches for a first down. Seventy thousand one hundred and eighteen the announced crowd here in Reliance Stadium today. Sixty three consecutive shutout or uh, sellouts. A couple shutouts in there. A couple shutouts. <laughs> now that would be some defense. Third and inches. We are under nine and a half to play. How long ago must it seem for the Colts when they were up 10 to nothing? They led 10 to nothing after one. Two tight ends and Slayton in the backfield. Rosenfels keeps it and stretching up ahead for the first down. Boy, that was not a smart move. Serving that football up there on a platter like that, unless you know you're on your way down. Sage Rosenfels is not down by contact here, and he lays his football out there like that. Oh, that is a risk. Freddie Kiaho made a reach for it. Look you are 54 right there. Give me that ball. You are not down by contact there, Sage Rosenfels. That's a free football. That is living dangerously. But he got the first down, first and goal. Slayton, touchdown. And let's see, you want to run in for a touchdown? Who you want to follow? How about Vontae Leach? There 
comes big number 44 with a pile driving block on Marlon Jackson. Boom! Oh. And Matt Schaub applauds from the sideline. Well, if you wanted a player to set a physical tone coming out of the locker room in the second half for the Texans, that's been number 44. They're blocking back Vontae Leach. Two touchdowns today for Steve Slayton. Chris Brown for the extra point. Twenty-seven unanswered points for the Houston Texans. Peyton Manning with an even deeper hole to climb out of. Twenty-seven, ten. Houston. After averaging just 14 and a half points a game, the first going to make it to the 20. Demarcus Fagans with the first hit. Manning and company down big. Greg Gumbel, Dan Deerdorf, and our terrific CBS Sports crew here at Reliant Stadium in Houston. The Indianapolis Colts have never trailed the Houston Texans by so many. Manning in the offense from their own 19. It has been a fired up Houston defense. The give to a die. And a die out to about the 24. The Colts had 109 total yards in the first quarter. Since then, they've managed 117 in all. When do you think the last time was somebody hung 27 unanswered points on them? Manny. With time and throws. And that is complete to Tom Santee. Out across the 30 to the 34 on a first down. As we were talking to Gary Kubiak, Dan, he pointed out this was a very, very crushed team, this Houston Texans team. That pass over the middle is complete to Sandy once again. A week ago in Jacksonville, they lost in overtime. And now Santy grabbing his left ankle. And is going to limp off the field. But this team thought they were really there against Jacksonville last week, only to suffer a really tough loss in OT. And it was a tough loss. Uh, and, and Matt Shaw played the best game that he had played all year. And it was so frustrating. Uh, you're right, Gary Kubiak said, I'd never been around a team that looked as, as spent as these guys looked. And, you know, sometimes when a team expends that much energy and, and, and then loses, a lot of time there's a carry over to the next week. That certainly hasn't been the case here. And Gary saying, yeah, they're just they're just looking to just get over that hump and get rid of the pressure so that they can just go out and play. Second and four. Manning throws as he's hit, and that's complete to Reggie Wayne. Wayne across midfield and into Houston territory. That's another Indy first down. The good thing for the Texans right now is they're able to generate that kind of a pass rush and dropping Peyton Manning with those four down linemen. They're not having to commit an extra rusher that exposes them defensively. Four again. Manning over the middle and once again that one's incomplete. And once again Manning's on the ground that time Amobi Okoye put him down. Eugene Wilson was on Dallas Clark to break that one up. The word we get from the Colts sideline, incidentally, receiver Anthony Gonzalez, questionable return with a concussion. Meanwhile, Andre Johnson with an ice pack on his left eye. Well, he took that big hit from Bethea. Second and ten. Penalty marker is down as a die takes it in and gets to about the 43-yard line. And let's check the flag on the far side of the field. It's all going to be an offside penalty against the defense. Uh, 
Offside, defense number 93 lined up in the neutral zone. And that's the first penalty, penalty of the day against the Houston Texans. And if it doesn't look tough enough being down by 17 points, take a look at their upcoming schedule. Look at the quality of those teams. They get to go home for Baltimore, but then back-to-back -back road games at Green Bay, at Tennessee, back home again for New England, then at Pittsburgh. And then another game against these Texans. And that is a crusher of a schedule. A more confident Houston team comes a call. On second and five, Manny stepping up over the middle. That's complete. This is Reggie Wayne and Wayne inside the 25 to about the 22. Another Colt first down. And now Manning with a little bit of rhythm. Well, he got a lot of time on that one. That time the four-man rush didn't get anywhere near Manning, and he had that's a long, slow developing pattern to Wayne, and Peyton had that much time. Wayne, six catches, 92 yards on the day. Manning looking, moving, and he's gonna pull it down and run. 15 and out of bounds at about the 11 yard line. Well, he never did look like any of the great scrambling quarterbacks like Tarkenton or Steve Young or somebody like that. But effective. Bad knee and all. Peyton Manning took off with it. And again, that four-man rush, uh, not effective. But I guarantee you one thing. Richard Smith, the defensive coordinator, he's leery about blitzing. Although he's showing it here. First down, just outside the 10-yard line. This is Dominique Rose, and he is hit and dropped at the 16-yard line by Moreland Greenwood. Well, they faked the blitz, and Greenwood was just locked up one-on-one -on -one with the back. And watch him right here at the bottom of the screen. He's just going to sit there, sit there, and when Rhodes turns up field, Greenwood, that's just too easy. A good defensive call. Loss of four, second and 14. Manning looking, throws incomplete. Threw that one into the dirt in front of Dummy Rhodes. Rhodes trying to act like he caught that ball when not sure there was anyone within a mile of the stadium. Didn't see it one hop on its way there. I, I don't know who he thought he was going to try to convince. Well, the crowd's going to feel it here. Third and 14. And the Texan fans on their feet. Over the middle, Marvin Harrison to about the seven. It'll be fourth down and about six. Well, it's a three-possession game for the Colts. Do you go for the field goal now? If they don't, this is it. You got to wonder. There's, I'm not sure there are three more possessions left in this game for Indianapolis. They can get a first down without getting the touchdown. Down at about the half-yard line. Manny. Pump fakes. End zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Santi with the good hands in the end zone and Manning marches the Colts downfield and into the end zone and three times today now they have converted on fourth down none bigger than this one for a touchdown again look how much time Peyton holds the ball one fake and then again he just stands there flat footed What a grab by Tom Santi in the end zone. Well, as considering the defender is all over him from behind, Harrison had him, both arms around him. But again, that was a lack of a pass rush that allowed that to happen. Peyton Manning stood in that pocket for a good five seconds, maybe longer. Vinatieri's kick is good. The Colts are now within 10 with 4.04 to play. Well, the last time Houston beat the Colts was back in 06. It was a, a case Ron Dane actually running the football. Marvin Harrison with a touchdown catch. But to win it, Chris Brown knocks it through. 27 to 24 Houston. Again, their only victory in a dozen contests against these Colts.
and the Colts perfect in October since 05. Well, they 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 also had an unbelievable September record. And they carved into that with this past September. You know, normally you'd say, well, we just kick it away and our defense will get it back. But how much confidence can they have in their defense? That's why the onside. Onside kick, and it's grabbed there by the Houston Texans' David Anderson. Uh, I think that's a good illustration that there's not a lot of confidence in the Colts' defense to take the football, you know, and get it back with only three downs. Again, you can only have six guys on one side of the football. And that one's just way too easy. And David Anderson, the third-year wide receiver out of Colorado State with the good hands, going up and pulling it down. And now Rosenfels and the Texans have the ball at the Colt 41 with 4.03 to play. I think that you could have made a case that maybe you kick it away and hope that you can get it back with the... Uh, three and out, but I, I, the Colts defense hasn't shown they're capable of doing that. I'm on green. Knocked down at the 40-yard line by Josh Thomas. Well, Houston knew if they could win this game that they've got three consecutive home games coming up. And take a look at who that's against. Miami, Detroit, and Cincinnati. Teams that are a collective one and nine coming into today. So the Texans are thinking to themselves, geez, even with that terrible 0-3 start on the road, if we could somehow beat the Colts, we got a shot at maybe being 4-3. and three. Speaking of starts, if this situation should stand and the Colts lose, their 1-3 and three start would be the worst for them since they began the 98 season at 0-4. And the 98 season... The team was being quarterbacked by this rookie named Peyton Manning. Timeout taken by the Colts means that each team has two remaining. Now let's be realistic. Two late scores by the Indianapolis Colts is hardly unheard of. But they can't let Houston score here. Second and nine. Amon Green, right side. Gets a couple of them to the 38. And whistles blow. Timeout stops the clock. 3.54 to play. And the Colts with one timeout remaining. Well, the Colts absolutely last in the NFL with only 64 yards a game rushing today. Have only bettered that by three. We talked earlier about how the play-action passing of Peyton Manning so critical to their offensive success. Well, play-action doesn't mean much if you don't have a representative running game that actually scares somebody. Meanwhile, Steve Slayton has put 92 yards rushing up for the Houston Colt or Houston Texans who are looking at third and eight. Rosenfeld by himself. Penalty marker flies. And Rosenfeld lost the football. Picked up by the Colts. This is Gary Brackett. Brackett up the sideline with blockers to the 10, the 5, touchdown. Again, there is a penalty marker down. Dwight Freeney is limping back at the 30-yard line. Holding offense number 69. This penalty will be declined. The result of the play, touchdown. Unbelievable. Sage Rosenfels tries to become Jim Brown. What a gaffe. At a time of the game when the utmost priority is to protect the football, Sage Rosenfels went airborne, and it was a disaster. You admire his courage. You don't see quarterbacks trying it very often. That's why they're not experienced runners. They're not used to being hit and cradling the football at the same time. Military's kick is good. Gary Brackett, 68 yards on the return. The Colts put 14 on the board in less than half a minute and pulled to within a field goal. 
Look at this effort by, but look at it. Look where the ball is. He never did get it into his body at the last minute. He gets hit in midair. And then Gary Brackett, what an effort there to stay in bounds. What a tremendous effort by Brackett to stay in bounds. Raheem Brock right there. Number 79 puts the shoulder into Rosenfels. And again, you got to appreciate the effort, but wow, the wrong thing to try to do. And coming up the sideline, Brackett close to the sideline. And on the other shot, you could see the official yep. running behind him and shaking his head. No, he nope. did not step out of bounds. He was all over it, and that is some effort and a great run by Gary Brackett, looking more like a running back. Okay, your team still has the lead. You still have the lead. You're going to get the football. All is not lost. Talk about being able to put a play in the rearview mirror. Now is the time for Sage Rosenfels to do that. Benetieri will kick it deep. Andre Davis will take a knee in the end zone. And Rosenfels and company will start on their own 20-yard line. 3.36 to play. Houston with two timeouts. Indy with one. The Texans lead it by a field goal. You know, this is, again, if if Houston here can put together a drive, which they, they've been moving the ball pretty well all day. Steve Slayton has been finding some run. I'm sure he's going, I'm sorry, guys, let, but this is still our game to win. You could almost feel Sage Rosenfels looking at all of that turf in front of him and going, oh, oh wow. Slayton and Leach in the backfield. This is Slayton. Hit at the 20, forward to the 22, Marlon Jackson with the tag on him. 3.25 to play, and the clock is moving. And Indy has one timeout remaining, and of course they're going to save it as long as they can. Matt Shaw. You know, taken the six, excuse me, Dan, taken yeah. ill last night, spent the night in the hospital, and has been a spectator today as Rosenfels is filled in. Andre Johnson, the go-to guy, is at the bottom. But he's a little nicked up after that hard hit. How effective is he? Rosenfels, the throw behind Slayton. Third and nine. Third and eight. Yeah, they're actually trying to run almost like a pick with Andre Johnson doing the clearing and then trying to throw in behind him. And that incomplete pass stops the clock with 2.50 to play and now a big, big play for this Houston offense. You know Jeff Saturday just sitting there going, yeah, we're going to win. On the move, chase from behind, lost the football. On the ground, who's got it? The Colts say they do. Well, no official has yet. That's the important part. Now they do. Robert Mathis forced the fumble from behind and covered it. I'll guarantee you that Robert Mathis and Raheem Brock are much faster than Sage Rosenfels. Again, there he is out there with that ball. What an effort. What an effort by Robert Mathis to extend himself and knock the football away from Rosenfels. Look at that. And Sage Rosenfels really lacking awareness that somebody on that Indianapolis defensive line isn't going to be after him as he starts to feather it down out in space. What an unbelievable turn of events. Manning in the Colts, first down at the 20. A dive, right side, big hole, inside the 15, inside the 10, and the native of Houston, Texas, down to the five-yard line, first and goal. It has 
been a while since we've seen a turnaround of this magnitude and I, I, I can't even imagine how stunned most of the people in this crowd have to be and I cannot imagine right now the mental state of Sage Rosenfeld. First and goal and two minute warning hits us right here. Only moments ago, the Colts were down 17. They're down three and knocking on the door. The Colts led this game 10-0 after one. Houston had 27 unanswered points to lead at 27-10, but back come the Colts. They have first and goal at the five, two minutes to play. What a turnaround. Manning throwing far corner of the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Reggie Wayne. That is unbelievable. What a catch by Reggie Wayne. Did he get both of his feet in? A one-handed snag. Just a little fade to the outside. Reeves, the defender. It looked like the right knee came down. Does the right knee come down? Inbounds. This will be an automatic review under two minutes to play. Let's see if he that right knee touches down inbounds. He's got control of the ball. Man, Whoa. the official right there rules that he was down, that that knee came down inbounds. And Certainly, they are looking at it upstairs oh, right now. Sure they are. They brought over Tony Carrente to uh, to take a look at this. You know, the official upstairs calls for the review, but Tony Carrente is the deciding authority here as he goes under the hood. Let's take another look. Two things in play, possession and inbounds. But is his left foot down when he has possession to start with? Let's see that. No, no, okay, right there. Does he have possession as the left foot goes down? Because there's one foot. And there's the second foot. And does he have complete control of the ball? I think he absolutely does. That's a touchdown. That is a touchdown. He had possession when the left foot was down. And then the right foot. Forget looking at the knee on the sidelines. I think the play was over well before that. That is extraordinary by Reggie Wayne. And I mean extraordinary. If it stands, that's career touchdown catch number 50 for Reggie Wayne. Here comes Tony Carrente. Peyton Manning thinks it's good. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field will stand. The receiver's shin, the receiver's shin hit the ground prior to the knee. It is a touchdown. There won't be a football fan in America who doesn't see that play before he or she goes to bed tonight. And now Adam Vinatieri with a big extra point. This will force the Texans to go for a touchdown instead of a field goal. Kick is on its way in good. A minute 54 to play. The Colts 21 points in the last 210 to take a 31-27 lead. Well, let's look at it one more time. I think Reggie Wayne is in on three counts. I think he's in on the left foot. Right there. The right foot, and then I think he's in again with the right knee right there. That is so special. And Sage and, Rosenfeld. Well, remember Greg earlier in the game where he on a short yardage situation, he lays that football out there. He's lucky he didn't get it taken away from him there. Then he jumps in the air. Raheem Brock 
knocks it out. Gary Brackett picks it up and runs it back for a touchdown. And if that wasn't enough, then Robert Mathis gets the double play. He strips it and recovers it. And Peyton Manning follows it up with this just, I don't even know how to describe that catch by Reggie Wayne. And right now, Sage Rosenfeld, Rosenfels, his head must be spinning to the point. Don't tell me he's not having trouble focusing. Any that, That's not humanly possible that he is not reeling right now. So now Andre Davis is deep. We mentioned this earlier. Davis had three touchdown returns last season, two in one game against Jacksonville. And he'll get a chance to reserve a turn this one from the three. 20. And across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. A minute 47 to play. Peyton Manning turns it over to his defense, and here comes Rosenfels. And also here comes Dwight Freeney, Raheem Brock, Robert Mathis. Who have turned it up a notch in these last few minutes. On first down. Short drop, quick pass, that's complete to Johnson, and Johnson across the 40 to the 41, and a first down. It has been an emotional day here in Houston. The damaged roof has delayed the Houston Texans opener till today. They come in 0-3. They have seen a 27-10 lead disappear in the last couple of minutes. The pass over the middle is complete to the tight end, Owen Daniels. Clock continues to move, coming up on a minute 15 to play. Now on second and three, another short drop and a quick pass, and that's incomplete in and out of the arms of Kevin Walter. So that'll stop the clock at 105. Again, I, we should not forget that the Houston offense has spent the better part of the day going right through the Colts' defense. This is no foregone conclusion that Indianapolis is going to repel them right here. Outside of those two, I don't even know if we call them bonehead plays by Rosenfels, the Texans have moved the ball efficiently against Indianapolis. The pass over the middle, and this time, Walter holds on for the first down inside the 45 to the 43. 56, 55 seconds to play. Houston with two timeouts. Rosenfeld spikes the football and stops the clock with 50 on the clock. Well, for those of you that have just joined us, Sage Rosenfels has had a bit of a dangerous day today. He stretches out with the ball there, almost has it taken away, but he did. But here he leaps over the top. Raheem Brock knocks the ball loose. Gary Brackett picks it up and runs for a touchdown. And then Robert Mathis strips it and recovers it on the next possession. And then Peyton Manning follows it up, throwing to Reggie Wayne a complete circus catch and a stunning development here for Houston. 50 seconds on the clock. Rosenfeld with time throwing, and it's intercepted. Intercepted and down to the turf with the football goes Melvin Bullock. I guess the old adage, if you play quarterback long enough, something really bad is going to happen. And today is Sage Rosenfeld's turn. Oh, my Lord. You got to take a chance. And the ball just sails on him. Who his intended receiver was, I'm not sure. There's not a Texan within about five yards. And in the last 10 plays, the Houston Texans have turned the football over three times, and Manning now looking to run the last 42 seconds off the clock, and he takes a knee. Houston takes its second timeout. Well, if Gary Kubiak thought last week's game against Jacksonville was a crusher, what's he going to say about this one? I, I don't know. They lost to Jacksonville last week in overtime after playing their hearts out. They had three hard, hard games in a row on the road. 
at Pittsburgh at Tennessee at Jacksonville all winning teams and then they come back and they had this game all but in their back pocket and the Texans use their final timeout the last time they can stop the clock with 38 seconds to play. Wow. Dwight Freeney, who sat out the last series after limping off the field on that bracket return. The snap, and that will do it. An unbelievable comeback by the Indianapolis Colts. As the last 25 seconds run down, the Colts improve to 2-2 two and two on the year, while the Texans pretty much spoil their own home opener here. Blowing a 27 to 10 lead and losing it 31 to 27. That's our final score. 31 27 up next. NFL on CBS continues with double letter action for Dan Deerdorf, Greg Gumble. So long from Houston.